This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and good times again for more affordable Wacom pen monitors. Not truly cheap, not you know, that's never probably going to be what Wacom does, but we reviewed the Wacom Cintiq 16 several months ago, and that was their 16-inch pen monitor that was meant to be the one for hobby artists, budding student professionals, someday kind of artists, because the price tag was $649, which was nice. But what if you want to work larger? If you're starting to get serious about art, like you're going to art school and that sort of thing, you need a bigger monitor to work with. Maybe you're doing some rendering and you're doing the artistic part of the rendering and you need a bigger display. So this one is 22 inches, or technically 21.5 inches, and it's $1199. Not cheap still, obviously, yeah, but compared to the Wacom Cintiq Pro 24 that we reviewed, which is starting at $2,000 for the non-touch model, well, it is a lot more affordable. We're going to look at it now. All right, so what is this thing? It's a full HD IPS pen monitor. It's a monitor, folks, so you need to have a computer attached to it. Windows or Mac, both are supported. This happens to be an MSI GE75 Raider, a gaming laptop, and I use that because performance is never going to be the issue with this laptop, so we know that anything happening with the monitor is about the monitor. Yeah. Also tested with the Mac, as always, that works just fine too. It's full HD display, which is what you're going to find from Huey on an XP pen as well. They haven't broken the barrier to high resolution displays. The only higher resolution option out there is Wacom Cintiq Pros, which are 4K resolution, but they're going to cost you a lot more money. Also, this does not have a laminated or bonded glass, two words for the same thing, which means that the, the glass sits above the digitizer layer and there's a little bit of air gap there. So the reasons why you care about that are, well, number one, a little bit of pen tip offset, but in the case of this, it's very, very small, and I am very neurotic when it comes to pen tip offset, real sensitive to it, so that part's not bad. It also adds a certain degree of, mm, a little loss of apparent contrast, because there is a layer above it, so it doesn't look quite as sharp and quite as contrasty that way. Now, Wacom Cintiq Pro lines are all lam laminated or bonded, displays. And both XP Pen and Huion now for their high-end around $900 22-inch monitors have a laminated glass option, which also happens to be higher color gamut than this one. This one covers the full sRGB gamut and about 75% of Adobe RGB. Specifically, you can see the specs on screen. So, you have to go to a Wacom Cintiq Pro in the Cintiq line if you want to get that most of Adobe RGB coverage. Yeah. If you're doing work for the web and not for print, then sRGB is all you need. That's fine. But for those of you who are working on photo editing for print, for example, or brochure creation, anything that gets printed up, that's where you need the wider color gamut. If you're that level of professional, you're probably looking at buying a more expensive product. Happily, it's pretty bright. It's actually brighter than the Wacom Cintiq 16 that we reviewed. It, we measured at 323 nits of brightness, which is good enough for fairly bright indoor lighting. Yay. Would I like to have at least a bonded glass for this price? I have to admit, yes, I would. For $1,200, you know, you think maybe they could have squeezed that in there. But that's Wacom being Wacom. They are never cheap, cheap. You might notice there's no express keys on the sides. This has nothing to do with the price range of this monitor. They also got rid of the express keys built into the side of the monitor for the Pro line that they released earlier. And I think this is because, number one, the bezel police are always out there complaining about bezel size, though I think artists do tend to like to have a little edge to rest their hand on. And the other reason is it reduces the footprint of the monitor to get rid of them. So you can use an express key remote, which is a $99 accessory to have the same functionality. I kind of actually prefer that. I find my arm gets a little tired. It's a little distracting to reach out to the monitor. We're all different. Maybe you don't feel that way, but that express key remote, man, I hold that like a pacifier in my hand, and I'm just so good with it, pressing the buttons, using it for cursor, movement, uh, brush size change, whatever it is, scrolling, you get the idea. Yeah. The pen experience on this is the exact same that you're going to get on the Pro line, and that's the awesome sauce part about this and what sets it apart from XP Pen, Huion, and so on, because their drivers, Wacom's drivers, tend to be very good. I mean, no drivers are perfect, obviously, but they're pretty robust. They're very full-featured. You can program the two side buttons on the pen and so on. You can make application specific programming. It's, it's wonderful stuff, but also they just have great cursor tracking and great calibration and great performance. 8,192 levels of pressure, also supporting tilt. It's good stuff. And it's standard Wacom EMR. Every program has been supporting this forever. So you're not going to run into generally speaking, any program compatibility issues. It also does support the newer windows Inc API. That's the best part. 
when you're drawing, the pen tip is where you expect it to be. The pressure curves are lovely. You can adjust them to suit yourself as well, but a light touch is fantastic with this well-supported. Diagonal line jitter, really not much to speak of here. Fish hooking, not going to happen. It's excellent for its intended purpose, which is to help you put down the best lines, strokes, whatever it is that you can. So it's also compatible with Wacom's other Pro Pen 2 line of pens, which means the Wacom Pro Pen 3D, if you want to have an extra side button and lose the eraser button on the end, that one's up to you. And also their Pro Pen Slim, which some of you might like. I have very long fingers, so I actually prefer to not have a slim pen, but it's there for you. Also the nibs, that's something that sets it apart from the XPs and the Hueons and so on of the world. It's not that you can just replace the nib, duh, of course you can, but Wacom offers a couple of different kind of nibs, like the felt nib, which is my preferred favorite. It gives a little bit more grip on the display, feels a little bit more like a pencil on paper, that sort of thing. Yeah. One thing I did notice with this, because it has a matte overlay, it's not etched glass, it's a little noisy using the felt nib. You hear a little bit of scratchy, scratchy, scratchy sound. It's not bad. It's not like some of the XP pens I've reviewed, which goes screech, 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 until the nibs wear in a little bit, but it's there. Also, older gen pens are compatible. You only get the pressure levels that those pens originally supported. So if you like the airbrush pen and so on, you get the idea. This thing is very heavy, 5.6 kilograms, which is 12.3 pounds. Yeah. Okay. Good thing that a stand is included this time. With the 16, the stand is sold separately. With this one, it's included and it's actually screwed on the back already for you. So you don't have to worry about anything. It's a standard visa mount on the back, 100 millimeters, 100 millimeters, 100 millimeters, 100 millimeters square. So if you want to use this with uh, an ergo arm or anything else, you could actually do that. It's a very robust, heavy, well-made stand and it adjusts anywhere from 19 degrees all the way to almost upright. So yeah, it's the usual style. You pull a little latch, you move tilt the display to where you want it, and you're done. No complaints there. Happy that it is included for a price, because usually Wacom doesn't. So like I said, it's compatible with both Windows and Mac, and the connection cables are included, which is HDMI and USB-A, and of course, the power cable. This is not a pigtail cable. Each of these is a separate cable. The bad news is that's less tidy. The good news is they're very long cables, so you can set this up on a desk and have a PC sitting underneath your desk or whatever, and it's easy to replace if one cable goes bad. If you're run using a Mac with the only having USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 ports, obviously you're going to need some dongle adapters, a hub, a Thunderbolt 3 dock, whatever it is. That's Mac life for you. I tested with a variety of programs, but that's not really a concern. Wacom EMR is the oldest standard. Everything supports it. Corel Painter, uh, Mango Studio, and of course Photoshop here when I was practicing. I was watching Michael James Smith. If you're into actual real oil painting, which I am, he has some great tutorials. So I was inspired by one of the ones that he did when I started painting this. So that's the Wacom Cintiq 22, the non-pro option with the big display on it. And as always, I'm going to sound like a broken record sooner or later. It's not the cheapest on the block. Obviously, XP Pen, Hueon, others have competing monitors, some of them with nicer monitor quality in terms of gamut, laminated displays, and even $300 less than this. But the pen performance on this is still unparalleled. The application support for Wacom EMR digitizers is great. And for those of you who like to download other people's brushes, most of them have developed them using Wacom products, so they behave the best there. So those would be the selling points. In the end, everybody likes a pretty monitor, everybody likes a high resolution monitor, you're going to pay a lot more for that high resolution monitor, you have to go to a Cintiq Pro for that sort of thing, but in the end, it really comes down to the line quality, the, the pen performance, right? You know, you're not just buying a monitor, if you're buying a standalone monitor, you buy any nice monitor you want. So, this is going to be the best pen experience, that's for sure. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this video.